Samura, the giant turtle that comes with many titles. The brave, the invincible, the friend of all children, and perhaps most notably, the guardian of the universe. He was first seen in 1965's Gamera the Giant Monster, where he played the role of a force of nature similar to the daikaiju that inspired it, Gojira. Following the original film, Gamera would go on to feature in 12 total films over the course of its 57-year lifespan, and throughout those entries would fight a variety of other giant monsters, many with extremely bizarre and sometimes freaky designs. And with the Gamera series seeing a revival in the form of a recently announced anime coming to Netflix, we thought it would be the right time to introduce the Guardian of the Universe to Dangerville and go over all the freaky monsters from the Gamera films. <coughs> Starting off this list, we have the kaiju that started the franchise, Gamera a giant prehistoric species of turtle. This monster stands at a height of 60 meters tall and weighed 80 metric tons. In terms of abilities, Gamera can swim at speeds of 50 knots, outpacing even the most advanced of battleships, which at the time maxed out at speeds of 35 knots. Gamera can retract his limbs, tail and neck and fire jets of flame from his arm and leg holes, which give him the ability to fly. Being able to reach speeds of Mach 3, which rivals even the current fastest jet aircraft, the Lockheed SR-71. He can also spit fire from his mouth, which gives Gamera an advantage in ranged combat. Gamera is an intelligent creature, being able to respond to human speech and is especially reactive to the cries of children, where he will immediately come to their defense. Overall, Gamera is a complex kaiju with a unique ability to fly like a fighter jet, swim faster than the fastest of battleships, and spit superheated fire breath. Let's move on to the first freaky monster that he faced off against. Barugon not to get mixed up with Baragon, is an ancient reptile that featured in the 1966 film Gamera vs Barugon. Standing at a height of 50 meters, with a length of 80 meters and weighing approximately 70 metric tons, this monster has possibly the most bizarre ability, that being that it can shoot a superheated rainbow out of its back. Alongside this, Barugon has an extendable tongue which can fire out like a battering ram to knock enemies over, and also has the ability to shoot out an icy mist from the end of his tongue, which has the ability to freeze Gamera in his place. But in terms of weaknesses, Barugon is susceptible to water. Throughout the film, the monster is kept in restraints through a system of artificial rain, and in the final fight, is drowned by the Guardian of the Universe. Possibly Gamera's most famous antagonist, Gauss a species of large vampire bat-like creature that appeared in the 1967 film Gamera vs Gauss. Standing to a height of 60 meters, with a wingspan of approximately 170 meters and weighing 60 metric tons, lighter than Gamera, likely due to the hollow bones which make it easier for this kaiju to fly. And it is certainly a proficient flyer, being able to reach speeds of Mach 3.5, which is even faster than Gamera with his jet propulsion system. During flight, the Gauss have the ability to blow a huge gust of wind, which provides enough thrust to blow away tanks and even buildings with its power. Gauss also has the ability to shoot an incredibly precise sonic beam from its mouth, also known as the supersonic scalpel, which can slice straight through the flesh and bone of opposing kaiju. As nocturnal creatures, Gauss come out at night to feast. Although they can overcome the power of the sun by emitting a fog-like gas which blocks out the sun, allowing them to come out at any time. In terms of weaknesses, Gauss, as we know, possesses an aversion to sunlight, to the point exposure to the sun will cause its skin to dry out and shrivel up, 
These creatures also are critically vulnerable to extreme heat, which gave Gamera an advantage over them in the fights. At the end of the movie, Gamera defeats Gauss by dragging it to the mouth of Mount Fuji, where a combination of the morning sunlight and the volcano's smoldering crater burned it alive. Next up, Virus, that appeared in the 1968 film Gamera vs. Virus. Standing at a height of 96 meters and weighing 120 metric tons, this alien was the leader of the Verations, squid-like beings from the planet Virus who became set upon conquering the Earth. The tentacles that cover its body from neck down are its main source of attack. By constricting them around its enemy, he can suffocate and crush his opponents. He also possesses a sharp beak, which can penetrate the flesh of the toughest of enemies. On top of this, Virus also has the ability to breathe underwater and even has telepathic powers. In terms of weaknesses, Virus is vulnerable to the cold and was killed when Gamera flew him into the atmosphere, freezing him solid. Wiron is another freakish monster from the Gamera series. Yes, he has a knife for a face. This creature was first seen in the 1969 film Gamera vs. Gueron. Standing at a height of 85 meters, weighing 110 metric tons, this creature is an alien kaiju that acted as a guard dog of two brain-eating space women, the last of a dead civilization on the planet Terra. As you can guess, its biggest offensive attacks revolve around its massive blade, which is sharp enough to cut right through Gamera's shell. As a secondary attack, Gueron can shoot shurikens from the center of the blade, which are sharp enough to slice into Gamera's arms and head. Also, fun fact about Gueron's roar is that it was used for another animal in a popular show. I'll give you a few seconds to guess what it is and put your answer in the comment section down below. Go on, have a guess. What do you think it is? Three, two, one. For those that wrote the Allosaurus from Walking with Dinosaurs, you are correct. In terms of weaknesses, after launching his shurikens, it left a weak spot that Gamma Ray exploited by shoving a missile through the hole and detonating it, which killed the monster, ending its reign of terror. Jiga is a horned quadrupedal reptile. She stands up to 40 meters tall, reaches lengths of 80 meters, and weighs 200 metric tons. Despite her immense weight, she is extremely agile and can run at speeds of 190 miles per hour. In terms of abilities, Jiga can shoot deadly quills from the corner of its nose, known as solid saliva missiles. On top of this, she can fire a beam from the corner of her head, known as the magnetium beam, which dissolves anything it comes in contact with. Jiga also possesses a needle at the tip of its tail, which is capable of piercing the flesh of its prey to suck the blood from their body. It can also be used to implant eggs into the victim, much like the Mutos from the MonsterVerse, and the parasite would live inside their body until they were ready to hatch and burst out of their hosts, killing them in what's probably the worst way to go. On top of this, Jiga has a suction ability which can pull objects towards her and also draw away from her as well, so basically she has the force. In terms of weaknesses, Jiga is susceptible to the Devil's Whistle, as it causes her immense pain. And when Gamera lured Jiga away using the whistle, he threw it and pierced her skull, killing her instantly. Now the last of the Showa series of films, Zegra, as seen in the 1971 film Gamera vs. Zegra. Standing 80 meters tall and weighing 75 metric tons, this creature is an alien fish that originated from a distant planet where fish feeds on people. In terms of abilities, Zegra can shoot three types of beams from the gem between his nose and mouth. An orange beam to paralyze its opponent, a green beam to teleport objects, and a red beam which destroys anything that comes in contact with it. Being incredibly agile, Zegra also dodges and outmaneuvers Gamera and uses the blades on his back, head, and fins to deal substantial damage. 
As for weaknesses, since Zegra is adapted to live in the dark ocean depths of its home world, it's extremely reactive to light and is greatly weakened by the sun. This kaiju took children hostage and used it as a ploy to get the human race to conform to his plan. But a furious Gamera threw him onto land and proceeded to use a rock to play his theme song on Zegra's dorsal fins like a xylophone before setting the alien shark ablaze with his fire breath. What a way to go. Now that was the Showa era, which lasted from 1965 to 1980, spanning across eight movies. Gamera would proceed to go on a long 15-year hiatus, but would return to the silver screen in 1995 with possibly the most impressive set of kaiju films ever to be released. Gamera makes his triumphant return in 1995's Gamera Guardian of the Universe, where he sports a more rugged and angular design to closely tie with the darker, more gritty tone of the new series. Now standing at 80 meters tall and weighing 120 metric tons, his origin has changed completely, this time being a guardian monster thought to be 8,000 years old, who was genetically engineered by an ancient Atlantean civilization to protect their people from the Gauss. In terms of abilities, Gamera has a new set of powers. His underwater speed has increased dramatically to 180 knots, and his flight speed also has improved, flying at Mach 3.5, now faster than even the fastest of modern fighter jets. In terms of offensive attacks, Gamera is outfitted with a ton of new weapons, such as the Plasma Fireball, which is the light-ranged attack, and High Plasma, which is a more powerful ranged attack. But his most powerful attack comes in the form of Ultimate Plasma, which shoots from his chest in a beautiful display of death and destruction. He also sports claws that sprout from his elbow, which come in handy in hand-to-hand -hand combat. His shell has also got new powers, such as the ability to spin whilst flying at such a high velocity that it cuts into opponents like a saw. Now that's Gamera, but who did he face in his first Heisei entry? Well, what better way to reboot the series than to bring back Gamera's most famous foe? Gauss makes its triumphant return in Gamera, Guardian of the Universe, where it gets a gorgeous new realistic bat-like makeover. Instead of being a prehistoric monster, they, like Gamera, were designed by the Atlantean civilization as a weapon, but they reproduced asexually to a point where they lost control and destroyed their creators. Heisei Gauss starts small at 10 meters, but by the end of the film reaches 85 meters tall in the form of Super Gauss and weighs 75 metric tons and can fly much faster than its Showa counterpart, being able to reach speeds of Mark 4.2 and potentially even faster. You may remember that Showa Gauss are vulnerable to light from the sun, but the Heisei breed now have developed eye plates which shield them from the sunlight. In terms of ranged attacks, the sonic beam returns, which is strong enough to cut through steel like it were paper. Its main close combat weapons are its hind claws, which emit a neurotoxin through their nails, which can paralyze its enemies, leaving its prey vulnerable while they drink their blood. Super Gauss was defeated when Gamera shot the beast in the head with its high plasma fireball. From here on in, we'll be seeing only new kaiju in these films. But how do they stack up to the freaky monsters we've already covered? Well, somehow they're the most creepy monsters ever seen in the Gamera series. Legion are a colony of extraterrestrial organisms from an unknown homeworld that appeared in 1996's Gamera 2 Advent of Legion. Like a parasite, they came to our world to turn it into their host to consume, reproduce, and spread before moving on to the next planet. As the name suggests, they utilize a hive mind to become a legion, where the Mother Legion, which stands at 140 meters tall and weighs a whopping 600 metric tons, controls an army of soldiers, which stand at 5 meters tall, weighing 300 kilograms. Mother Legion has the ability to produce 100 soldiers every hour, leading to a deadly swarm capable of outnumbering and overpowering Gamera, slicing into him like a thousand tiny knives. 
In terms of abilities, Mother Legion can split her nasal horn and fire a blue beam of focused microwave energy from the cavity, called the microwave shell which has major destructive powers, being able to destroy a manufacturing facility with a few blasts, and even put holes in Gamera's shell. Mother Legion can produce electromagnetic waves from her wave claws, which is capable of interfering with communication of electronic devices. She can even generate a barrier which defends the creature from oncoming ranged attacks. Legion also has the ability to grow primitive wings and fly at the relatively slow speed of Mach 1. In terms of weaknesses, Legion's wave claws are especially fragile and was severed by sustained fire from conventional anti-tank missiles. She was defeated when Gamera unleashed his ultimate plasma blast, which vaporized the extraterrestrial being, ending its conquest of the planet there and then. Iris that appeared in 1999's Gamera 3 Revenge of Iris. Considered to be the toughest enemy Gamera has ever faced, Iris stands at a height of 99 meters with tentacles that reach 1,999 meters, weighing approximately 19,999 tons. Starting off its life cycle as a small larva with a mouthless head, small black eyes, and several long tentacles that sprout from its snail-like shell. It has the ability to absorb the life force of organic matter by stabbing them with its tentacle spears, and it starts feeding on local wildlife and even people, leaving behind shriveled, putrid corpses. Iris grows to an adult size, now bipedal, with two hooved legs and retractable sword-like arms topped by a head that resembles a pointed seashell. In terms of abilities, Iris has the same supersonic scalpel seen on the Gauss, which shoots from the tip of its tentacles. He also has the ability to copy his victim's attacks, utilizing a spear absorber which protrudes from its arms. The blades pierce Gamera's shell and drain his blood, granting Iris the ability to mimic his powers, which is demonstrated as he uses Gamera's plasma fireballs against him. He also has an anti-plasma field, which utilizes the tentacles to deflect Gamera's ranged attacks. Iris is also capable of flying at an insane Mach 9, which is nine times faster than the speed of sound. In the end, Iris was defeated by Gamera's vanishing fist, where he punched straight through the monster's body. Now we skip forward seven years to 2006 with the release of Gamera the Brave, the first and only Gamera film of the millennium era. This film was much more child-friendly, and the designs and story reflected that. The Brave is not connected to any of the previous films, and the Gamera we see in the film is the successor to Avant Gamera, who sacrificed himself to destroy a flock of Gauss in 1973. Gamera in this film is called Toto, after being named by Toru, the boy who discovered Gamera's egg. Starting off as small as a regular turtle, Toto soon grows to 1 meter, then 8 meters, and finally 30 meters tall, sporting an adorable soft and wide-eyed design, and at its peak he weighed 900 metric tons. As for abilities, Toto has the classic fire breath, and as a hatchling, Toto could levitate, but later in the film he gains the ability to fly in the traditional fashion. Even at Toto's biggest size in the film, he's still an adolescent compared to the previous iterations of the character, which means he's inexperienced and lacks the abilities of his forefathers. But how does it fare against its first foe? Zedus, as seen in Gamera the Brave, is a giant reptilian kaiju that grows up to 50 meters tall, 150 meters long, and weighs 2,000 metric tons. Zedus was originally a semi-aquatic lizard that was mutated by feeding on the corpses of Gauss. Zedus is a very close combat oriented kaiju, and he has a powerful natural acid that dispenses from its claws and tip of its tongue, allowing him to wear down and penetrate Toto's shell. He also has immense physical prowess, ravaging Toto at close range with its claws, 
teeth and tail, and can leap 200 meters into the air to gain an advantage against its enemy. The closest Cedus gets to a ranged attack is its spear-like tongue, which can reach up to 100 meters in length, and pierce the flesh of its enemies with assistance from its biological acid. This kaiju was, in the end, taken down by Toto, as Toto charged up and unleashed a more powerful fireball, which completely obliterated Zedus. So that's all the freaky monsters from the Gamera films. We've had everything from the weird rainbow-spewing monster Barugon and the knife-faced Gueron to the terrifying Legion and Iris. What monsters will make an appearance in the upcoming Gamera anime? Gauss? Jiga? Virus? Or something completely new? Let us know in the comment section down below. Don't forget to subscribe and stomp the notification button to become a resident of Dangerville today and to keep up to date on all our upcoming Gamera videos. Don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it because it lets us know what you want to see more of. I've been Alistair and we'll see you residents in the next one. I'm